Okay, welcome back to part two of the Mosaic Damascus or Star Damascus knife. Here's me standing here talking a bunch of nonsense and telling you that this billet is amazing and it was really expensive to make and blah blah blah. But it actually was. <laughs> You'll see in the next start of uh, next set of clips here. I'm gonna start start taking that um, that billet that we have there, a little flat piece, and start widening it out. Um, believe it or not, that's about two hundred and fifty dollars worth of steel right there that I hold in my hands, right here. So I turn my dies sideways so that I can start spreading it out, get some uh, width on this billet for this uh, kitchen knife that we're making. Now this knife uh, right now I'm sitting at, mm, I would say this would be. This is the first knife that I'm making for this customer. He is now commissioned me for a third knife. I'll see if I'll make a video on the third one, but the second one's already done. It was just a brisket knife. Kind of looks like a bread knife. Did a, a nice little San Mai type style. Damascus on the outside, 15 and 20 core type deal. It was pretty nice. Okay, so now we're lengthening, lengthening out this billet. Um, usually people say that when you do have uh, tile Damascus or mosaic Damascus don't forge it into shape. So naturally I decided to um, forge it into shape. The reasoning why people say don't forge mosaic Damascus into shape is because well you don't want to distort this beautiful tile pattern or explosion or whatever kind of pattern that you have in this blade. You want it to have one constant picture from back to front. Reasoning why I I'm going against that is because with this explosion Damascus or the star Damascus, I wanted to have constant picture or uh, contrast from the heel and then taper to the tip like normal, but I want my picture also to change from the heel down to the tip. So you'll see after I'm done forging here, the tip is not 100% down to a sharp point. I will actually grind that into shape afterwards, but I manipulated the picture enough to where I'm happy. Also, if you do decide to forge this thing into shape, if you have uh, Damascus or tile Damascus that you want to forge into shape, don't forge it out too hard. Keep it almost at a forge welding temperature so uh, you don't tear welds apart. That's all I can say. That's my only advice I can give you. Um, there has been so many welding sessions on this thing. It's been welded in the horizontal plane, vertical plane. It's got all kinds of welds on this thing. So you do not want to tear this thing apart by over forging it or putting too much pressure into it. When I start working on this thing's handle or trying to get the handle into shape, you'll see I'll probably move it by a less than quarter inch of a time. So here I'll, I'll, I'll continue to gently coerce this metal into the shape that I wanted. And I'll switch over to my rounding dies to start putting in the uh, finger grip here in just a second right here so i think this is probably the most i forged it at one point probably over quarter quarter of an inch up into itself which is not ideal but good thing it didn't tear apart or anything just uh flattening it out get it all on even thickness and uh yeah do the last little bit of hand forging get it into the shape that i want straightening it out getting the spine straight and then uh, war or heat this thing up and throw it into some vermiculite so it cools down nice and slow. Getting it ready for all the uh, scratch marks we'll be putting into it, measurements, all that kind of good stuff. Okay, here it is, nice and cold. Gonna put some lines in to see the uh, shape that we want this knife in, like final shape. And I just use a good old fashioned gold paint marker, paint pen. It stands out, stands out pretty good as soon as you start grinding onto it. It doesn't melt away the, the color that you put on the blade because of the heat put into it. I actually tried to aim for a little bit of an upswept handle to get you more room in between your hands and whatever cutting surface you got in there and it, did, it worked out pretty good. And just like magic, all the access has been ground off and here's the final shape of the blade, pretty much. Love the shape of this blade. 
perfect size, perfect length. Usually with uh, kitchen knives go between four and a half to five inch long handle. That is from finger grip all the way back to the end of the knife. Okay, now I'm gonna put some permanent marker on the edge. We're gonna get our center line. I usually just use the same thickness drill bit. You'll see here in a second to uh, plot the lines on the edge. And then directly after that, I need anything else to take it straight to the belt grinder and get that center line ground in. It's usually like a 45 degree angle that you put on the edge. Reasoning for this is, is when you do harden this blade and you put it down in your, or you quench this blade, you, the Martin side forms right through your blade, like, like usually, like, like usual. But sometimes, I don't know if you guys have noticed, if you harden the blade and you take it out of the quench, leave it for like five minutes so the thing hardens up and everything, and you put a file to it, it doesn't skate the file most of the time. Now, that usually happens with a really high heat when you've had this thing at a forge welding temperature and you start getting carbon migration, which means probably a sixteenth of an inch or maybe less on the surface is pretty much devoid of any carbon, which it doesn't harden. So that's why I kind of do this nice 45 degree angle here for my edge. Stuck this in the acid, washed it off, and took most of this scale off. What I'll do is I'll drill the holes now for the handle work for later on, and I will take this to the belt sander and thin this out a bit because it's pretty thick. And then get ready for the quench. Normalize and quench. And there we go, I threw it, uh, started tampering it and I've been checking it for hardness. 65 Rockwell. Skates it still, so I'll have to temper this a few times. Bring it down to around 60. But I'm gonna go sand this, thin it out more because it's still pretty thick. Next step, etch, and then handle. Okay, there it is. I blued the spine up, so it's nice and tough. Edge is harder than a woodpecker's lips. This thing tested around 60 to 65 Rockwell. The spine will be way softer now. Toughness, flexibility. Next up, sand that off and go for the ferric chloride start doing the etch so this is how I prep my scales the blade is in the etch right now Wait 10 minutes and she's good to go. Now, while we wait, uh, black walnut, black walnut, curly maple, uh, desert ironwood. Some of these scales are sent to me by a really good friend of mine, Heath Heiliger from Facebook and Shepherd's Forge on YouTube. He, uh, you guys will usually see him on Forging It Forward on Facebook. Amazing dude. What is this? Ooh. Mark Uh Wenge. Mammoth Ivory. Black Walnut, Black Walnut. Now this is the expensive stuff. This is Indian Ebony. So I'm thinking I'm going to go with these, a set of these, Black Ebony, special project one day, Let's try the other one.
sure. Shepherd's Forge. This was sent to me from County Line Forge, James. He sent me this one day. Oh, this is beautiful. Guys, who check out his work. He sells these. These are amazing. Um, when you Also, when you break these in half, it breaks right through. It doesn't just break on where it seals with the wood. Awesome, dude. Good product. Okay, a while ago, a friend of mine showed me that when you do sand something and you want it perfectly flat by hand, you do a figure eight. Don't do the up and down or the side to side because you're putting uneven pressure on whatever you're trying to send. So, we're gonna do that now. Okay. Now that is pretty. Ta -da. So, now comes the time where you set the sole of the blade. This blade has drunk heavily in my blood. I cut myself sometimes by accident, stupid. Anyway, we will throw in some wake-up juice into this water. This is a pasta container that my wife absolutely, positively knows that I have. We shall throw in the coffee. Kofefe. This is warm tap water, by the way. That's thick. If you take your beautiful piece of art, which I'm too afraid to touch because I took all the grease off of it, I don't know if you guys can actually see the pattern. Kind of, sort of. Okay. Now, you baptize it in caffeine. And then you wait. <laughs> 